All right, good morning. I'm Pinellas County Sheriff Bob Gualtieri. Um, we're here this morning to announce uh, Mental Health for Heroes. Uh, you're going to hear uh, some remarks from me and then from Commissioner Janet Long and from Tom Pepin. There's an adage uh, that people don't care what you know until they know that you care. And that could not be truer when it comes to law enforcement officers and other first responders. A lot's been said over the last few years about the challenges with law enforcement hiring and law enforcement retention. We can offer great pay, great benefits, but at its core to hire and retain the best of the best. The people doing the job of taking care of the community have to know that the community cares about them and about their well-being. And this isn't just their physical well-being, but their emotional and psychological well-being too. A trend that we've seen over the last few years is that most of the officers who leave our agencies, that they don't leave to go work for other law enforcement agencies. They get out of the law enforcement profession altogether. They simply have had enough or that they can't handle it anymore. Many leave for what they attribute, as they tell us when they leave, and they attribute to the stress of the job. The stressors are not only what officers see and deal with on calls, but stressors that the job brings into their personal lives, including family relationships. When law enforcement leaders convene and we talk about hiring and retention, the topic at the top of the list is officer wellness. In some, we have to take care of the people doing the job so that they can take care of us because the job takes a toll on the emotional health of first responders. They deal with everyone else's crisis of the day, but they too have issues in their personal and professional lives that they need help with. The traditional model has been that agencies provide mental health services through EAP and other employee assistance programs, but these employee assistance programs are woefully underused. They're underused mostly because there's a stigma that these strong people, these first responders to crisis, are weak if they seek help because in their minds and traditionally in agency culture, first responders are those who help others, not those who need help. Publicly acknowledging that a first responder needs help is hard for them to do within the culture of the law enforcement and first responder community. Cops, firefighters, and EMS professionals fear that if it's known that they are going to get help with mental health issues, that it will adversely affect their careers then that they will be labeled and viewed differently. We try to get the message across that that's not true, it's okay not to be okay, and that getting help is not just okay, but it is encouraged and it's good, it's healthy, and that it won't hurt your career. But the reality is we can say that all day long, but it doesn't change the fact that they won't seek help and get services. These traditional services, as I said, are there, but they are not used as people continue to struggle. Some struggle to the point where they have to leave the career field altogether, sometimes on their own, and sometimes we have to force them out because they can no longer function. And very sadly, some even take their own lives. Another challenge with the traditional services is that the providers don't have the experience and the relationship to first responders so that those seeking help feel comfortable and the patient and the provider can relate to each other. As we've had discussions about officer wellness over the last couple of years, two things stick out. Number one, services need to be provided by mental health professionals who are former first responders or who have specialized training in helping the first responder community. First responders will relate to those who are like them or understand them. Number two, access to services anonymously is essential to people seeking help. Without anonymity, people simply will not engage. Law enforcement, as we know, is not perfect, but know this, is that law enforcement in this county and in this state and this nation is not broken. We have room to grow, to do more, and to do it better. But all of that starts with taking care of our people, and taking care of our people means more than just an equipment, means more than just a paycheck, and means more than just good equipment. It means taking care of the person as a whole, because when we take care of our people, they'll take care of us. Several of us have had discussions over time about how we can do more, do it better, and do it differently in providing access to mental health services that law enforcement officers and other first responders will actually use and that will actually make a difference. Again, the keys are anonymous services by specialized providers. 
Earlier this year, we established Mental Health for Heroes, and today we announced the formal launch of the organization and its services. Commissioner Long will provide more detailed information in a minute about the organization, but the essence of it is, is that it is a nonprofit organization dedicated to providing funding for cost-free, anonymous, and specialized mental health services to the Pinellas County first responder community. Mental Health for Heroes is already providing services for over 50 current members of the Pinellas County Sheriff's Office. Mental Health for Heroes is funded through some grants, but primarily funding has come, and we need it to continue to come from the community. People like Tom Pepin, who is a great supporter of law enforcement, and you'll hear from Tom today. There's no more important service that government provides in keeping the community safe, and to do that effectively, we have to take care of the people doing the job on the front line every day. So to explain more about Mental Health for Heroes, I'm gonna to introduce to you uh, Pinellas County Commissioner Janet Long. Commissioner. Good morning, everyone. As the sheriff said, my name is Janet Long, and I am your Pinellas County Commissioner, if you live in Pinellas County. As a wife, a mother, a grandmother, my family and I know very well the toll that public servants grapple with every day because all of my family members are or have been public servants. My husband was an officer with the Seminole Fire Department. Both of our sons are both veterans who served in combat. Our son, Logan, was not 20 years old when he was deployed into Iraq. And when we invaded Iraq, he was on the front line. Upon returning, he became a police officer with the city of Clearwater and served honorably for 18 years. Our son Paul was deployed into Afghanistan as a commander of an Apache unit and he flew nearly 3,000 hours in combat. It was a struggle for them to come home and immerse themselves in civilian life. It was a struggle for our family to know how to help them. I tell you this little story to share with you how passionate I, how passionate I am about this effort personally. It means a lot to my family, and I know it means a lot to the law enforcement and first responder community. There is no question that we live in very challenging times. Our first responders are on the front lines in most of the hardest moments of our lives, and over and over and over again, every day, they sometimes work and involve themselves in the worst of our humanity. Yet they still get up, put on their uniforms, badges and guns, and head out to be there for us when we are in need. Recognizing all of this, Mental Health for Heroes was established to ensure that there was a safe place for these unsung heroes among us. We are here to help them in their need and to help them navigate the issues that are, they are facing over and over again on a daily basis. If any of you listening today to this press conference want to take advantage of this opportunity, you need only go online, fill out the application and or the intake form and hit submit. Your form will go electronically to the provider that you have chosen when you go to our website and then you will be contacted immediately for an interview and to come into the office and seek help. The program has been built to be entirely anonymous, and there are reasons for that. We are working hard to dispel the image and the stigma of anyone who needs mental health. There will be no file created for your health insurance or for whatever agency you are coming from. 
you'll be contacted again by your the office that you have asked for in, a, in your intake form. So I urge all of you to please um, take advantage of this program. We have worked so hard to be able to gather the funds to be able to help you and keep you as healthy and happy and joyful as your life was meant to be. If you have any questions or concerns after this press conference today, please contact one of the many of our board members that are here today. And I urge all of you to keep in touch with us. We want to hear from you. Thank you so much. And now I would like to introduce Mr. Tom Pepin, who has been so generous to our foundation. Mr. Pepin. Thank you, Commissioner and Sheriff. It's great to be here. I am from Tampa. It sounds strange because when I think of Tampa, I think of Tampa Bay. And I have my family here with me today because I know every day law enforcement goes out thinking about their families. And I know that the mental health extends beyond law enforcement. It extends to their families. I, I'm getting in late in this game. I, uh, I, it's an honor to be here with the other founding business members, but I just learned of Mental Health for Heroes less than a week ago. And as soon as I heard it, and I heard about the anonymity and what, what, what the services they're gonna provide to these uh, law enforcement officers, there was no question. I'm gonna throw my daughter trial by fire under the bus here. She's the director of our family foundation, so I'm going to let her uh, say a few words uh, here. But um, uh, I wake up every morning, and there's nothing I wouldn't do to keep my family safe. And I know that officers feel that same way. Their family is the Tampa Bay community. I've been on a lot of regional economic development councils and all, and they think of certain things that will lure people to an area. Well, one of the things they don't think about is the safety of their citizens. And that's where law enforcement comes in. And that's one of the most important things now. People aren't going to move to Oakland, California right now, I guarantee you. But they still will come to Tampa Bay. With programs like this, we'll, we'll ensure that that continues to happen. And I'd like to introduce my daughter, Tina, who is the director of the Pepin Family Foundation. Hi everyone, good morning. Um, yes, I'd like to emphasize um, our families. thank you to not only everyone in the room that made today happen in this organization, but our law enforcement officers, um, our first responders, EMTs, <clears throat> excuse me, our mental health counselors who are in the room today, who are dedicating their life to the betterment of this community. Thank you for your daily work and sacrifice. Um, the past few years, I think I can say it goes without saying that um, it's put a lot into pers perspective for not only us as community members, but there is a huge need for community leaders to stand up, especially for this cause. Um, as my father mentioned, people are moving to Florida and they're prioritizing their safety. Um, the past few weeks, we've talked to a lot of chiefs and individuals within this community, and they are emphasizing the importance of um, officer wellness. So as the director of the Pepin Family Foundation, um, we are committing to using our, our platform to intentionally support the betterment of the law enforcement community and everyone involved in it. Um, this commitment not only includes the betterment of public perception, but also wellness and mental health. Your physical and mental strength and capacity is the most crucial part. And we as a community, it's our duty um, to support you and to provide every resource possible in order to do so. Um, so also, our, our private sector benefits from the life-saving work that our law enforcement community undertakes every day. Giving to this community not only is the right thing to do, but it ensures that our local businesses, our workforce, our econo ec economy, excuse me, are able to thrive. So we thank you, our family thanks you all. We are committed to this cause and the Mental Health for Heroes. So thank you again for everything you do and God bless you all, thank you.
So, so Tom Pepin and the uh, Pepin Family Foundation and Tina uh, epitomize what is so necessary in this day and age, and that is community support for law enforcement. Uh, the law enforcement officers need to know uh, that they're supported, and they need to know they're supported not only by us, uh, by the leaders of the law enforcement agencies, and by those in leadership within county government and city governments across Florida, but by the community itself. And actions speak louder than words, and putting uh, the words into action is going to make a difference. And when we first started talking to Tom about what we were doing, why we were doing it, why it's so necessary, uh, he immediately stepped up. And the contribution that he's giving today uh, to Mental Health for Heroes is a check for $100,000. Um, and so that will make a difference. That will help uh, these law enforcement officers, firefighters, EMS professionals, to be able to get the help they need, to stay on the job, and to do what they do every day, and that is, is to provide for a safe community. Uh, there's nothing more important than that, as I said, than what government does is to keep the community safe, and we need people out there. And in this day and age, the most important thing to them is they got to know that people care, and people like Tom and Tina and the Pepin Family Foundation and all of the other community groups uh, that have stepped forward so far. But more help is needed and that's part of the ask today is that when community people see this that they're also willing to step forward like tom and the others have uh, to help us help the heroes and mental health for heroes is going to be here uh, to provide those two crucial things uh, anonymous services by people who look like them have walked in those shoes and understand them so that we continue to thrive in the public safety community in Pinellas County.